hello everyone. Today, today is another solo cast day and today is going to be centered around um, a five-day experience called Dieta. Now, I'm going to start off by playing a clip that I put up on Instagram prior to Dieta before I kind of entered into that space, give you a little bit of context for it, and then I'm going to do the best I can to articulate more clearly some of the lessons, some of the intention, you know, give you an understanding of, of what an experience, a ceremonial space like Dieta can provide. Talk about some of the people that helped me, um, some of the medicine is what we call, the, the different things that came to me while I was attuning. That's a big part of why I went into dieta, was to attune more to what is already surrounding us. It's not in books, it's not in podcasts, it's not in videos, it's in nature. And uh, if that sounds a little weird, woo -woo, I, I get it. I totally get it. But hopefully I'm, I'm able to share this in a way that makes sense for everyone. I didn't understand exactly what Dieta was at all. I just felt called to do it. And everything in my life presented this opportunity. And so it was time for me to do it. I'd like to start off by playing a clip that I put up on Instagram to share a little bit about Dieta. Um, and then I'm going to go deeper into some of those parts. And um, yeah, it's, um, there's a, listen, there's a lot 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 that came through and I'm not gonna try to tell you everything I could never possibly do that um, I have a journal full of uh, knowing that came to me during this space this, this moments of clarity and um, you know mine was a little bit more than four days some people go much longer, some people go shorter. It, it's really whatever you need it to be. So keep that in mind as you're listening that if you do feel called to this space, to this ceremony, it can be whatever you need it to be. And, uh, you know, I have a couple of men that showed up for me that kind of paved the way for this. My brother, Kyle Kingsbury, for one, had done an extended dieta. And though we didn't talk a ton about the mechanics of it, how he handled it, I just saw what was happening with him. It was inspiring. And then my brother, Gunter Bergman, really guided me through this. Um, gave me just enough structure so... It had a little bit of form to it, but it was up to me to decide on how rigid I wanted to be, and that was maybe the greatest lesson. Well, it was. I don't want to. I don't want to put a hierarchical, hierarchical, you know, um, spin on this, but it was. A, it was a very important message for me in particular. Um, Boyd Vardy, Boyd, he and I podcasted before. Before I started, the day before I started, and he shared just some very simple, profound wisdom with me. One being, don't try to do dieta well. Dieta is going to be some of what you want, and it's going to be some of what spirit wants, and it's going to be this co-creation of the two of you, and it's going to unfold that way if you allow it. And if you've listened to this podcast at all, you know that I have a deep bond with Boyd. I've learned a lot from him. 
he is a truth speaker to me. Um, and I continue to be grateful that he's shown up in my life. I, I'm grateful for Jonathan Novi, an old-time Chicago friend, brother, someone I used to work with who nudged me twice to listen to Boyd's podcast when he was a guest on, on another gentleman's podcast. And it, it was the start of a series of events that has really changed my life. And so grateful for you, Jonathan. Thanks, brother. And then again, I, I've said it before, but I, the words don't quite convey how important the support of my wife wife Peyton even though she wasn't here she's been with two of our kids in Idaho but I felt so held by her so supported and that was really important for me and it was really important for me to accept that that love and support because that's been something that's been hard for me which maybe sounds weird and I didn't realize it was hard for me until I really started to do my work. I knew that there was there was something there. That's I've that I've started to uncover through this through this dieta, and so. You know, um, she was with me the entire time, and I felt her presence. So, thank you, honey. I love you. Now I'm going to play this clip. That I posted on Instagram. And just to give you all some, a little bit of insight. Say hi to Petunia, y'all. Yeah, she's wonderful. Listen, I'm going to be signing off for probably five days until Monday. Um, I'm doing what they call a dieta, where I'm unplugging from technology, uh, cleaning up the diet, doing a lot of reflection, meditating, journaling, um, commune with my altar. For me, it's about um, getting more into the being, more into that essence of allowing. And so the intention is to spend time in nature as much as I can. Uh, I spoke with Boyd Vardy this morning and he gave me just great wisdom around that, to spend time around the fire as much as I can at odd times too, at midnight, at three in the morning by myself. And so I'm going to do that um, and try to just do what the body's calling to me. And if it's tired to just lay down and if I'm outside, maybe lay down under a tree. Um, and if I'm hungry, eat, but don't eat because it's nine o'clock in the morning. Um, be no caffeine. You know, no kind of unclean substances like uh, any kind of alcohol. Uh, um, yeah, really looking forward to this. I feel like I've been doing a ton of inner work and I've been doing it with a lot of intention and trying. And so now is the time to actually experience all of this. And to, for me, it's connecting to the divine feminine. And that means for me to commune with mother nature to be outside as much as I can um, and just to allow, allow for what unfolds to unfold. So I will be posting a few things. I have them lined up to be posted this week. So I will respond if, to, to anything when I get back online, uh, most likely on Monday. And yeah, it starts with a, an opening ceremony. And so I haven't decided what that looks like yet. I'm just going to see what I'm called to do. I'll do that tonight. This is tonight, so it's Tuesday. And then I'll have a closing ceremony on Sunday. We'll have some ideas around what that may look like. But um, yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. I, uh, it's a bit of my, my, uh, my version of Boyd's 40 days out on the reserve. Yeah, so I'm going to try this. Uh, I love you all. Thanks for your support. Thanks for holding space for me in this time. And I look forward to seeing you on the other side. Much love. 
Yeah. Closing ceremony on Sunday. That didn't happen exactly like I had planned. Um, but as, as Boyd says, you know, you have form to leave form. And so you have form, which is structure. So the structure is I'm going to have an opening ceremony, closing ceremonies on Sunday. But it can all change if you tune in. And I was able to. Um, but in all my excitement to start the podcast, I forgot to, what I wanted to share with you all too, as some of you know, um, sometimes my guests will play an instrument to start the podcast. And it was my intention to play my hand pan, which I haven't really played for a long time, but because Dieta allowed the space and it allowed me to just not have judgment about how quote unquote shitty I am at it, right? I had judgment around that so I would sit around the fire at night and play with it and so I'm just gonna play you a little ditty um that yeah that I that I kind of it's it's not even a ditty it's just like a little sequence of of uh notes but I'm gonna play it for you and then we'll get into the podcast You know, it doesn't have to be you know, super complicated. Like that little, I guess it's four notes. You know, at the beginning I kind of played the scale, but it's just, it's just four notes. And I got to just connect to that. And for me, that's where I'm at with it. And it, I realized that that's okay. So anyway... You know, again, I didn't try to do the hand pan well. I just, I just played what felt right for me. Um, but anyway, listen, there's a, there's, there's a lot I want to share. I have a few notes here. I'm not entirely sure where to begin, but, you know, maybe I'll start by sharing some of the, the places, the areas, the spaces where I found myself on a regular basis. Um, I was in the sauna, and so I've been going into the sauna. We've had this for a couple of years, and I know the benefits of the sauna and the science and all that. But, um, and I've even done a few sweat lodges in my day, and those are super powerful. Those are very, um, you know, detoxifying not only physically but emotionally and spiritually, and it really can help kind of cleanse the body. I would usually go into the sauna, I would have a meditation on, or maybe I'd even listen to a podcast or an audio book, but I always had kind of something going on. My sauna sessions ended up turning into usually two 30-minute sessions in the day, one when I first got up, one at night. Obviously, because I'm off technology, I didn't have any guided meditation, but I would sit there, and I would put it on, I would wait until it got to the highest setting, not to brag, but th that's, I mean, that's what felt right. And I would stay in it as long as I wasn't resisting. And it's okay if I started to resist, if I was aware of that, and I could just surrender. Because this was kind of a theme throughout the whole time. It's this fork in the road. Are you going to resist and try to push through and grind through and you know, I know it's Rogan's famous quote, but, you know, 
his inner bitch comes out and he and he pushes through and I, and I think there's there's a time and a place for that but for me during this 5 day period it wasn't about that it was can I just let go and experience what's happening can I use my breath to surrender and to let go and to allow to accept all that heat and that discomfort allow it to do its work for me and there was one case where I had maybe five minutes left to go and I, I just wasn't there. And so I got out and um, I would use, often use the cold plunge afterwards. And I thought about using it in the same method, like go in and see if, if I can just surrender to it. And if you've seen any of the videos I posted on Instagram, sometimes I can really surrender to it. And I think that's beautiful but I didn't, I didn't want to add that kind of almost degree of difficulty to the whole thing because I didn't think it was necessary. So I would literally get in the cold plunge for five to ten seconds just to cool my body off, and then I would get out. And so, again, I let go of this idea that mm, I can do this and I can do all these things and my diet will be even better if I can do this cold plunge like this. Like, no, it wasn't the time. And um, so anyway, the, the sauna and, and really the sweat lodge in native traditions, actually, in a, and there's a lot of traditions that use the sweat lodge, but um, I really felt like I was able to finally tune into that energy, at least in a way that I never had. And sure, thoughts would come to my mind, and it wasn't like I was trying to meditate I would allow the thoughts to come. Sometimes I would try to remember them, to write them down because they, they were useful. But generally, I just tried to be with the heat and try to appreciate the heat and be grateful for the heat and for what it was doing for me. And so that was, that was an area where, again, I spent probably twice a day I was there. I spent a lot of time at my altar. I've spoken about this in my newsletter, I posted about it, but I created a new altar and um, just to maybe paint the picture for you a little bit, I, I set one up in our bedroom, we, we hadn't, didn't have one in there, we had this like really beautiful long skinny wooden table and I moved it from one side of the room to the other side of the room where the couch was, and I put the couch where it was, because there's probably five or six just beautiful paintings. I want to say four of them are from our dear friend Francine Turk, who's an amazing artist. So she has these beautiful charcoals, and they're all feminine. So I have this beautiful feminine form, and there's one that's not hers that's these angel wings. And it just felt like the right place for me as I'm trying to connect to the feminine and surrender to that and really try to unlock, uncover, de-armor that pathway to the feminine within me. Because I know I've got, I feel like I've gotten there on some level, but there's so much uh, deeper connection for me to experience that that felt like the appropriate place and it absolutely was and then from there I just kind of gathered things that that spoke to me whether they had to do with the feminine there were several pictures of my wife my daughter Hope um, there were pictures of my boys because I wanted them there to experience that and I had some totems a, f a few little animal totems from Peru. It felt very just uh, sacred to me. Um, I had candles on the altar, and so the candles were lit the entire dieta. Um, often throughout the day, when I would be in a kind of at the altar, I would tune in, I would pull a card from a deck, and I'll, I'll post this in the show notes, and I don't want to get too too deep into the, the weeds with, with what pulling cards is, but essentially 
I would, maybe it was after blowing some hape, and I'll explain that later. Maybe it was after hape, I would ask a question. Um, how can I be a more open and loving and receiving partner to my wife, Peyton? And then I really tune into that, and, and then I would go to the deck of cards, and I would feel like what card, and I would pull the card, and then I would flip it over to see what it was, and sit with the the, the beautiful picture. The, this deck was is really has some beautiful artwork. And then I would read about it. And then after that, I would sit with it, and I would journal um, kind of what it meant to me. And if you've never done that, if you, can, if you really tune in, there's really some great medicine in there. And, and whether you believe it's divine or not, it actually doesn't have to be. It can be, there's, there's, there's information, there's medicine, there are gifts all around us. If we choose to see them that way, if we choose to be open to that. And again, that was like another big lesson for me. That's why like no technology, like really trying to clean the system, like no sugar, like I said, no alcohol, really good sleep, eating really clean, and being out of nature, and just starting to understand that nature has so much to teach. And I'll get into what those different awarenesses I had while while I was tuned in, while my body and my mind and my spirit was attuned to what was going on around me, not what was going on in my head. And I think that's one of the major things. And when I've gone on my five-day silent retreats, I've had no technology. And that really allows me, and I think everyone else there, to tune into what's going on around them. Now, um, the beautiful thing about doing this dieta at the house is I got to experience our house, our property, our neighborhood in a much different way because I didn't have any distractions that I would normally have. So I'm really glad I, I, I did it here. Um, but yeah, the, the altar, the altar is a place to prayer, a uh, place for prayer. And it can be whatever prayer you want. Um, and if you just pull that out of the religious context, for those of you who maybe get a little um, uneasy with that, because it's, it's not how I did it. It was really trying to tune in to connect to source, spirit, God, whatever that feels appropriate to me. And show my gratitude express my gratitude, and then share the things that I need help with and the things that I want. And the beautiful thing about the altar is um, the altar can hold everything that those lower vibrations, that lower energy, that stuff, the irritation, the anger, the jealousy, the rage, the envy, all that, the, whole, the altar is there to hold that. And with, when you have fire there, the fire can transmute that and, and use that in whatever way that it's used. And so there's different ideas around that, but I'll just I'll kind of leave it at that. Um, and so the altar became a, a really beautiful place for me to quiet everything down. Now, I spent, I mentioned um, the fire in my Instagram video. You know, and Boyd had mentioned, sit there at midnight or at 3 a.m. I actually never did that. I wanted to. One night I was going to sleep by the fire. Um, and I I kind of settled in around 10.30, and I woke up at 11.30, and I'm like, you know what, I just want to go into my bed. And so I went into my bed. I didn't, it wasn't, it was, this wasn't about testing my will. This wasn't about seeing if I could do it. Really, again, really well. The old me would have stuck it out. But for what? Like I, that, that, that wasn't what felt right for me. 
And so I went to bed. But the fire became a place where I told you earlier, I, I learned how to play the handpan a little bit. I have a Lakota flute. I played that a little. And often I just sat out there and listened to the cicadas and just allowed for what came to, to come in. And it played an amazing role in my closing ceremony, which I'll share with you later, but it was ugh, so beautiful. Um, I also, my intention was to be out in nature a lot and to go to these different trailheads in Austin in the Green Belt and go on these hikes, sit with nature, do some hoppe, connect. I did that once. And it was awesome. And if I had to guess, I would have said I would have done four of those prior to starting Dieta, but I did one, and it was perfect. I generally would take a walk here that I that I take with Peyton often. It's about a mile and a half out, and I would come back on the same path. It's just the road near where we live. Near the end of this road, I was just called to sit on this rock. And it happened to be next to this cedar tree. And this became a place I would do hape at the altar, but I would also do it on this rock every day. And so let me see if I can give you hape 101. Um, I'll do the best I can. But for those of you who are going to be coming, uh, become a part of the Unlearn experience, the it's a seven-week online brotherhood where I'm curating these different experiences with these different teachers and guides like Boyd. Um, and then it's going to wrap up in person. The eighth week will be here in Austin. And part of what I want to introduce as ceremony is hape. So hape is a sacred tobacco. It's a super fine powder. It's made by... I want to say there's probably three prominent tribes down in Peru that make it, and they make it with a lot of intention, a lot of prayer. It's a long process. There's a lot that goes into it. But essentially, what, what my experience with Hape had been, a, a friend of mine had introduced me to it a couple of years ago while we were on a hike. And it was pretty cool, and it kind of um, it changes your perception about stuff for, like, there's, there's probably a 10, 15-minute period where things are different. But much like I said earlier, form to leave form, I learned how to use hape, but I didn't know how to use hape with intention. And so... I got a, a, a beautiful kind of uh, reintroduction by my brother Gunter the night before I started ceremony. And it really started that night or probably started that morning or started the day before. It, it's, it actually, your ceremony starts when you commit to doing it. So while technically I went off technology on Wednesday, my ceremony started probably five days prior. That's neither here nor there. But hape is this is a finely ground tobacco, and there's two ways for it to be administered. You can self-administer it, or you can have someone else administer it. Well, obviously for me, I was going to be doing it myself. And it basically, the device, the applicator, looks like, a V where one of the legs is longer than the other. And the longer leg is where you put the hape. So you put the hape in that longer leg. And that will go in your, you start with your left nostril. So it goes in your left nostril. And then you put the shorter leg in your mouth and you blow it up into your nose. Um, you do the left first. And then you do the right, right after to kind of balance everything out. But before, for me, before I blew the hape up my nose, I would connect to spirit. And I would announce my presence. 
I would, again, share my gratitude, share the things I really needed help with. And every time I just asked for help with surrendering to the hape because it's uncomfortable. Um, oftentimes your eyes water like intensely because it's going straight up your nose and it's, it's uncomfortable. Um, so I, again, every time I asked for that kind of guidance and, and assistance, and then again, I would say things that I want, you know, things that I want to manifest or do, or, um, and then I would close the prayer and, and I would take a few deep breaths and through the left nostril and the right nostril. And what ended up happening is it started to evolve for me. I started to get more and more each time, like more connected to the process and the intention. And it got to be, I, I literally just did it before I got on today. And what happens if done properly, like I said, with intention, is it clears all the junk out of your mind. All the it, it for those of you who are into more spiritual stuff, it, it it's supposed to align the chakras. You know, I, I would eventually, as I got more and more comfortable using it, on the inhales, I would take in, you know, I would really just Think about taking in vitality and I would be opening my heart and on the exhale, I would envision taking all the lower vibrational energy, all that stuff I was talking about earlier, the anger, the frustration, the jealousy, the impatience, the irritability. Yeah, I would take that from my head and just move it all the way down my body to the ground to Mother Earth because ultimately... <laughs> She's, the great mother is the only one who can hold that energy and she's willing and able to do that. And so what would happen is, is as I was feeling this energy move through me, it would go through my hands and it was like the hape was like, like my hands were on, they're not on fire, that's not the right term. They were like tingling, there was energy moving through them. It was amazing. But anyway, I started using it probably three or four times a day, and it would just really clear all the bullshit out. And I would sit in meditation for five, six, eight, ten minutes and allow for things to come to me. And a couple of things in particular really hit home. One, uh, this mantra, open your heart, open your heart. Open, like, And I just came to understand that there's still this armoring around my heart. I mean, if you know me, you, I'm a loving brother. I, all that stuff. But for some reason, there, there's, there's still a layer or maybe several where I'm just not allowing myself to receive all the love that's around me. Um, so I know that's that's a lot of the work I need to do. And so that mantra just came to me, which is really beautiful. And it's just a great reminder. Kept getting this idea, just surrender, let go, let go. And every time I would say that and I would relax, I would get way more just like into the medicine. And I would almost like dance with it. When when I was truly letting go, my body would move back and forth like I was literally dancing with the medicine. And so, and that was way more beautiful than trying to resist it. It's just, it was like such a great metaphor for, for like almost all the lessons I was getting. It's like, dude, when you resist, when you deny what's there, what's already there, what's already all around me, when I deny that, I have to like push and pull and struggle and grind and grit. But if I just allow and accept and say thank you, it's just a beautiful, easy experience. And so, and to be fair, I went into this thing thinking, oh, fuck, I'm not really that excited about using Hape. I just haven't loved it. I, mean, I started doing it two years ago, and I stopped pretty soon after. It wasn't, it just, I didn't understand it. Like I said with the sauna, I didn't understand 
how spiritual and how cleansing it could really be. Um, and so, super grateful for for really understanding that master teacher plant. And it's something that I'm really excited to share for all the men that are going to be part of the unlearned experience. And, and then my five brothers that are coming in this weekend, um, one of them did it with me the other day for the first time. And I'm going to share it with the other four. And I'm just really, ex- I'm, I'm excited to introduce them to this. Because I think if done properly, it's so powerful. And it's not psychoactive. It's so, so it's not like a psychedelic or anything like that. It's totally legal, all that. Um, now, what's interesting, if you understand or have an idea of how the universe may work, maybe it's not that interesting. It's just obvious. But I finished Dieta on Sunday I talked to my wife, Peyton. She sends me an email from, I forget the, the, the place she buys, like all these amazing kind of natural products from. They were doing Hoppe 101 on Tuesday. They were doing this hour-long Zoom call where they discussed the history of Hoppe, how to do it, da 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 When I did Hoppe, I was taught, Blow it in your nose, you hold it. If you feel it come down the back of your neck, you want to spit it out. Um, don't swallow it. Eventually, you blow your nose, all that. I was like, oh, absolutely, I'm down with that. I'm watching these guys do it. They, they blow it in the left nostril and then inhale it up further and then do the right, do the same, and then just keep breathing it in, swallowing it, never blowing their nose. I'm like, they're crazy. I don't think I should do that. Like, I'm, I feel good about how I'm doing it because it seems easier. Well, before this session, I decided to give it a shot. I'm like, well, how bad can it be? And, you know, I ended up pouring out more than I wanted to, but I've learned to just go with what you know, kind of accept what unfolded. And I had, a, you know, a larger dose than I wanted. I blew it up. I inhaled. I blew the other one up. I inhaled. I swallowed when I needed to. I haven't blown my nose. I feel awesome. And again, I, 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 I'm, I'm slowly seeing the benefits of opening up to the idea that I may not know much and to learn from others, to try it out for myself, not take their word, but try it out for myself and see. And I feel like this is actually better suited for me. I actually really like that. Uh, So that was pretty cool. I spent, like I said, I spent time out in nature. If I would have guessed how much time Prior to starting Dieta, I would have spent in nature. It would have been much more than I did. And I was okay with that. Uh, It wasn't, you know, you you go into ceremony, I speak from experience, with ideas about how it's going to unfold. Whether it's a plant medicine ceremony like psilocybin, magic mushrooms, or some other psychoactive plant, teacher plant, or whatever, or Dieta. You have an idea, like this is what it's going to look like. And so often I would have so much rigidity around what it's supposed to look like that if, if, if you've done ceremonial work with psychedelics, it's not a fun experience when you're trying to tell the teacher plant what you want. It's going to give you what you need, and that's to let go. And sometimes it gets really challenging, really difficult, what they call bad trips. They're just super challenging. And for me, whenever that's happened, it's a reminder. No, you got to let go. You got to let go. Like, you don't have to do this. And that's it. it it's, I think, 
we're taught that we have to impose our will and do these things and have agency. And all these things can be really useful if you don't use them everywhere in your life. And I think for a while I used them in a lot of areas. There's so many other places to let go and surrender to all the love and support that your partner, your family, your brothers and sisters, your community, nature, the universe. Like if, if I'm, I'm starting to understand because I'm experiencing the benefits of letting go and watching things come to me rather than me having to go get them. It's that what they, they talk about the, the, the masculine is electric and the feminine is magnetic. And they're both important. And in balance, they're unstoppable. But I was operating in a very much an electric state of mind. And as I've, you know, really worked to surrender, that sounds weird, work to surrender, but it's, it's, it's a conscious decision for me still to have to surrender. Because my inclination, I have... 40 some, I mean, I'm 48 now, so I've had a lot of years of this other energy that I've been operating with. And look, it's served me really well in a lot of ways, but there's no telling how difficult it's made things too. And, and, and I invite all that. It's all part of my learning, my path, and my growth. So, so it's, it's all good. I'm not judging it, but having an easier life through accepting and, and being supported, it's pretty awesome. So anyway, um, being out in nature, as much as, you know, you know, one of the things Boyd said, go where your feet take you. And I just did. And I found myself, I was inside doing dishes. At one point, I, I literally was cleaning a shower drain. It's like this long, it's like, four feet long and it hadn't it had accumulated some stuff underneath it and it's like kind of a tricky thing to get it open anyway in any event I just had a bug up my ass to go clean it one day and I cleaned it on dieta it's like who cares you know now another place that this happened at the dieta took place is out in civilian life how well My son, so the dieta was to be from Wednesday to Sunday. My son, Jake, had a basketball tournament this weekend where he ended up having six games. And I really considered not going to just to try to hold to the intention of the ceremony, to not be around other people a lot. And, um, but then I thought about it. Why am I doing dieta? It's not to be rigid and strict and adhere to some sort of structure or some agreement that I had made previous. It's to be flexible and understanding and to go with what feels right. And if you have kids, you know what a joy it is to watch your kids play sports. And he's going to be a senior. I don't know how much, how many more basketball games he's going to be playing. And so I went and watched all his games, and it was amazing. And in between games, I went to Home Depot. I went to the bank. I had to go to CVS. And I was okay with it. It didn't fuck up my dieta. It actually made it more powerful because I was allowing for what I wanted to do to happen and to still take, like, that was a lesson in and of itself. The joy I got from watching him play, him be with his teammates, see how much fun he was having, how hard he works, how he shows up. It was amazing. I would have missed that had I been home and meditating and walking around in the grass. And and so, you know, it... it do you get to... And ceremony takes a lot of different 
kind of, it takes a lot of different form for each of us if we allow it to. If we have, again, a just enough context and structure to guide us, but then to attune. We need to attune to what we feel, not what we think. The thinking, thinking is useful at times. But I think a lot of us, and I will speak personally, spend a lot of time thinking about stuff and not attuning to what feels right. And the more I've done that, the more I've made decisions that have felt true. And so, you know, being in that space, not isolated, which was most of my intention, felt really good. You know, maybe the next dieta, I I go somewhere where I am isolated and, and maybe I take it a little bit deeper. Maybe not, but this isn't the only dieta. I'm going to do. Um, it really felt perfect for the for the first one, and I've told many people this since I've come off dieta. I mean, if you've been following the podcast or the newsletter, you, you know that I've had a number of these transformational experiences with plant medicines, with the med- five day silent retreats, so on and so forth. This was up there with all of them. Um, again, I don't want to start ranking them, but I think bringing in a, a master teacher plant like Hape to bring clarity, it allowed me to see through all the bullshit and see where the work really is. And one of the things that came to me was stop, you know, stop with the coaching calls, stop like going into books to study and research and the podcast for that. Be in life right now. All around you is all the teaching you need right now. I've, I, I've, I've, I have as I have all the form I need. I have all the information I need about why things are the way they are. Now it's time to go and have my experience and decide for myself. And I think that's the only way I truly start to convene with that divine feminine, that sacred feminine that I feel like is a little bit of the missing piece for me right now. It's it's within me. It just hasn't been allowed to um, to really flourish. And so I'm creating what I guess I feel like I'm doing is I'm creating space for that by not overdoing it with all this information. The information for me is, is it's been slowing me down. I feel like I hit a wall in this dieta was the the answer to that. It was the reminder like, yeah, you like my intuition was right. Stop. Stop with all that. Um you know, I, I did read one book while I started reading one book while I was on Dieta. It's called Walking with Bears by uh Will Tegel. Will's a he's an elder here in Austin. Um Again, I don't want to go too deep into that, but he's mentoring three of my dear brothers, and I'm feeling very called to come under um, to come under his wing, so to speak. And his book is, um, you know, he's like a classically trained psychotherapist, I guess you'd say, but he blends that with this deep shamanic Native American medicine man understanding and life that the book the book is amazing you know walking with bears and so I, I highly recommend it um, I'm gonna you know I'm gonna read a I'm gonna read a little a little bit from it because this was some of the medicine that's actually been coming through in some of the readings um, some of the coaching that's been that I've had in the past and so this passage in particular, I really appreciated. So Will's talking about part of this book was was taken from uh, a manuscript that his mentor, um, a man called Bearheart, 
had written but it had passed away he wasn't able to finish it and so he went to bear Hart's wife and was giving her you know kind of the versions of the book as it was coming out and she responded and this is actually her response in the book about um, something he had written well what he wrote he, this is what he wrote the truth moves on wave after wave by the way, if you're gonna if you hear a little noise, my buddies just showed up, and so hopefully they got the text that I'm podcasting right now, and they're just uh, we'll have that what we call in ceremony that noble silence, but we'll see. Anyway, the truth moves on wave after wave, some full of pain, some full of pleasure. Then we find ourselves paddling like crazy all the while, telling anyone who will listen what our truth is about, only it no longer exists. Working in the sh shamanic domain meant being sensitive and aware of subtle and great changes, wave after wave. So really attuning. And that's, that's like a great lesson that, that I felt like I finally tapped into, is just attuning to like what's actually happening around me without me imposing my will on everything and trying to control he said, in writing this book, I sent versions to Regina Water Spirit, Bearheart's spouse, since I value her response and needed her to check for accuracy. When she read the above paragraph, she wrote this response. Every once in a while, I would awaken in the middle of the night by Bearheart's singing of Old Man River. After many episodes of this annoying habit of his, which I thought was selfish and rude, I had an insight when I spontaneously started singing the song myself. I checked and noticed that I was upright and caught in a great stress. My stress came from doing my very best to hold on to old paradigms. Can anyone uh, resonate with that? I was clutching ways I had become accustomed to and depended on as if these ways would save my life. Then I began to listen to the words I was singing, words I had heard in the middle of the night many times from Bearheart. Old man river, that old man river, he just keeps rolling along. You and I, we sweat and strain, but old man river, he just keeps rolling along. Then she goes on to say, that was the turning point. I became more willing to let things change and say thank you. Nowadays, I find myself singing the song when I am holding on too tight. And one time I woke myself up singing it during a, a dream time. So anyway, um, and he said, he goes on to say, it was beginning to dawn on me that the bear walk emphasized learning how to give up straining and resisting in order to roll with the river. Wow. That, that really sent a shock through me. Principal quality of nature-based consciousness arises from knowing how to listen to fears without allowing them to dominate, as we will now see in the story he was about to tell. Wow, I did not get emotional when I read that before, but I, I totally get that. That that's that's straining and resisting. That's that fork in the road where I can take that turn or I can accept and allow and I can say thank you for whatever kind of emerges. It doesn't always look pretty on the surface, but there's a lesson there if we're paying attention. If I can attune to it and I can still be afraid and have be fearful, but if, if I if I can just allow it to wash over me, there's great lessons there. And so anyway uh, I hope to have a lot more to share from Will uh, in the coming months. Um, he's someone that I'm deeply called to work with. I'd be honored if, if he would have me. Um, yeah, he would take me under his wing. One of the other interesting things is, is um, when I was done, actually I wasn't even done with it, but I, it was probably three days in, I was driving to Jake's basketball game hadn't felt really as clean and as clear as I 
felt that day and as I have felt since I've been on this dieta. And um, I mean, a lot of it has to do with, I mean, again, I've talked about this before, like just weeding the garden. We don't need to add more shit. Like, I st- what did I do? I took away stuff. I took away caffeine. I took away sugar. Um, I took away any kind of psychoactive plants. I really paid attention to my sleep. When I was tired, I took a nap. I took several naps. I went to bed when I was tired. Sometimes it was at midnight. Sometimes it was at 10. But what I recognized is it, is it really came down to I was sweating a lot. I was outside. Whenever I was outside, I had my shirt off. And if I wasn't walking on a path, I would barely, uh, I usually had bare feet. And so I was connecting to the earth. I was getting that vitamin D. I was drinking this water machine called the Kangen water machine, which um, the water goes through a series of metal plates that gives it a negative charge, which is literally the best water you can give yourself. It, it's, it's, it goes into your cells. What it does for your cells is our cells become dehydrated. It's just a fact. This creates more hydration and more buoyancy, and so they're able to have a, uh, the charge in them that they need to act proper, to work properly. And so I had that. Again, I talked about the sleep. I, I didn't, and then I ate really clean. I had a little bit of protein, no red meat, no pork. That's kind of a no-no during dieta, but I had a little bit of chicken. I had a little bit of like Whole Foods tuna fish. Uh, sorry, I had to qualify that. It's from Whole Foods, even though it wasn't, I don't think it was wild caught. Nevertheless, see, I, I gave I gave in here and there, but I kept it real simple. And then I had some tea and I drank this drink called Rasa, which is like, uh, it's got a bunch of different like chicory and some cacao and some other um, really amazing uh, ingredients in it. But I took everything out of my diet and I took every, the technology was obviously a big thing. And I had the inclination, I'm like, wow, cleaning this vessel, like maybe I'll start adding in, because I have some amazing supplements here. Maybe I'll start adding some of these things in. And I was like, why? Well, what's the sense? Like, let's just work with what's here in nature you know, if I were to get s- s- water from a natural spring, it would be like the water I get from the Kangen machine. And so that's replicating that. Everything else, and again, the sweat was using heat to detoxify, much like a fever does for you. Gets out that those toxins. But I was using these things as my medicine to heal. And one of the things I recognized few people would remark, oh, you look like really energetic and vibrant. And what I noticed was I had like been doing Zoom calls for, you know, ever since quarantine, like everybody else. And I would see my, my, my uh, video of me like, dude, like you're sleeping a lot. You're eating fairly well. You know, like when I really dig down, I'm not eating that well. I'm eating a lot of gluten free crackers with cheese and it's like stuff where it's it's actually a lot of sugar still but it's gluten-free right so it's supposed to be good but I I recognize that I'm just playing a game with myself there but nevertheless I just looked kind of tired I'm in the sun all the time like really taking care of myself but I just didn't look that um um like I had much vitality and now when I look in the mirror, it's like, oh, I look like I feel. And so, again, I, I started removing stuff. And I'm trying to be really careful about adding back in technology. It was hard because after five days off, and then I want to get back off technology because, you know, my my brothers are coming in. So I had, like, a lot of things to do within three days. Oh, by by the way... While I was on Dieta, we had stu- before we had started negotiating on this amazing property here in Austin where Peyton and I want to create a healing center. And we hadn't negotiated the price by the time I went off technology. So Peyton, I left it up to her, which did an amazing job. 
So I had to, when I came back on, I had a lot of stuff to do around that. Today's July 15th tax day. So I had to finish up all this tax stuff. It, it's just been a lot in the last couple of days, but it's okay. Like now I'm going to put it back away. Um, in any event, let me share a few of the, the medicines that came to me. And then, uh, and then maybe I'll read one more thing and we'll wrap it up there. But one of the, each time I would go to that rock and sit down next to that cedar tree and do hape, a couple things would happen. As I would come out of the hape, sometimes before, butterflies. It was generally two or three different black butterflies would, would show up. And to me, I don't think it's any secret. And as I say that, I look out the window and there's a butterfly. I mean, that's it. That's it right there. Beautiful. It's like when I was talking with Boyd about this on our podcast, a big elephant, a big bull elephant showed up in his view. And the elephant, when I was on retreat with Boyd, was the animal that we had, I guess, the, I don't know how to describe it, kind of the greatest sense of presence that I had ever felt. And so as we're talking, an elephant shows up. He tells me that. I remind him. It's just like it all starts to happen. So anyway, the, the butterfly represents transformation. And, you know, it's to allow for it to happen and not be too intent on forcing it. And I think that's where I found myself over the last couple of months is trying to force that transformation, like really trying to transform really well, do all the things. Um, and it was like letting go of all of those things that really a- allowed me to, um, you're probably hearing, maybe you can hear Petunia in the background. Maybe not, but she doesn't like strangers. And so the, my two buddies that just showed up, she's not used to them yet. So if they'll kindly give her some space, she'll probably quiet down. But anyway, um, the butterfly medicine was very prominent for me. Also, what what would appear to happen was when I finally would surrender to the hobby and to the discomfort and just allow everything to relax. It's 100 degrees here. I mean, I'm in the sun on a rock. I'm hot. And when you do hape, it's intense. You get hotter. When I surrendered, a frigging cool breeze came out of nowhere or out of somewhere, however you want to look at it. But it was another thing. Like when you let go, these, these things will happen for you if you pay attention. And so, again, there's just more attuning to these things. It was really interesting. I've, I've been kind of working, doing a little bit of shadow work, and I won't get into that now, but um, I was attuning to the fact when I was walking, there were a lot of birds that would fly overhead that were creating shadows, and sometimes it was butterflies, but it would just remind me, like, oh, yeah, you need to partner with your shadow. It's there to teach you. It's not going anywhere. Don't try to outrun it. Don't try to outsmart it. It's not going to happen. But that was a great teacher for me. Obviously, that river medicine that I just read, that was something just to go with the flow, just let it happen, and just to always be there. Um, That was important. Now, those of you who have spent time here with me at the house, you probably know that I've had a bit of a tenuous relationship with our dog, Mona. She's a little mini golden doodle. She can be considered very barky, loud, um, hard to kind of calm her down at times. Before I started the ethics, she had peed a few times on the floor. Now, what had happened was our other dog, Lenny, is up in Idaho with Peyton. My niece, Lindsay, has been staying with us and her dog, Enzo, so... And she's in Maine right now. So two, her two best friends are gone. And I wasn't giving her any attention. And so she let me know she's not happy. 
she was by my side this entire dieta. When I was at the altar, every time I'd be at the altar, she would be at my feet holding space. She would, it, it was remarkable wherever I walked on the property. And she, she does that with a lot of, you know, Peyton's here. She's always following her around. But she would be at my feet or walking with me everywhere. It was, I finally woke up, finally woke up to how loyal and special and forgiving she is and how patient she is. Like the lessons that was coming through from the way that she's shown up for me, even as I've resisted that in her, was really beautiful. And I mean, I'd have never thought I'd have this relationship with her, but she's, it was amazing. Like she was, she was, so anyway, there's, there's, there's a lot, there's a lot of, of, there's, there's many layers to go deeper on some of this stuff. I'm going to spare it for now. Um, trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to wrap up with before I read that. No, I think, I think that's, I think one of the main things for me to take away is the importance of having intention. Um, I've had a lot of experiences lately that I've enjoyed but haven't been with intention. And that's totally fine. I have no judgment around that whatsoever. It's just a reminder to me that if you don't have intention, I'm going to read about it right in a second, if you don't have intention... You're not going to get out of it what you think you're going to get out of it. And so this has really shown me the power of intention. And I don't know if that how that feels for you to hear that. If you're like, yeah, I absolutely get it. Or, oh, maybe. But don't take my word for it. Do those things in your life. Do them without intention and then trying doing them with intention and see what the result is. See what medicine is there for you. Because I recognized as I opened up to nature, all these different messages were coming in for me. They're all around. I don't, like I said, I don't need to dig in a book. I don't need to... Um, I don't want to say don't listen to a podcast, but definitely keep listening to the podcast. But again, the, the, let it go sometimes. Sometimes you just need to allow for the lessons to wash over you. They're all around. And so I'm going to read. This is something I, I was actually thumbing through it after Dieta. It's called Sacred Ceremony. How to Create Ceremonies for Healing, Transitions, and Celebrations by uh, Dr. Stephen Farmer. Um, But he he writes this part on the four principles of ceremony. And this is about intention. I'll just read you a little bit and then we'll call it a day. When a ceremony is devoid of clear intention, it also loses passion, inspiration, and direction. The ceremony may then slip into empty ritual where form prevails over substance and structure becomes a priority over heartfelt sacredness. Clear intention is the skeleton that supports the body of the ceremony, giving it backbone. In some ways, intention is everything. Once we set an intention, then we act more clearly and with greater certainty. The conscious mind then becomes the instrument to focus our awareness and attention. We build power. Ceremony is inspired. Spontaneous healings can occur. And participants often experience an embodied sense of spirit, an ecstatic state with insights, revelations, and even visions taking place. This doesn't happen in every ceremony, mind you, but there's a far greater opportunity for this to occur when intention is clear and established before implementation. I hope I conveyed what he just said very succinctly. 
that was my experience. I went in with intention. I let go of structure. I let go of rigidity. It showed up. Mind you, it shows. It showed up all the time. But having the awareness that it was going to show up allowed me to go the other route. So that's it. I'm going to close it on that. Thank you, Dr. Stephen Farmer. Will's actually a f- uh, doctor as well, Dr. Will Tegel. Thank you for listening. Um, and for all of you that um, are going to be joining the Unlearn Experience, again, I can't wait to share this hape ceremony with you all. I uh, hope you all have a wonderful day. Much love. <laughs>